So, uh, this next gentleman, he's a local boy. Can I hear? Who's here? Who's from Pasadena? Yeah. Alright, he's one of our natives. Our natives. Very funny dude, performs all over town. Let's hear for a regular in our shows, Mr. Dilip Cotri. Let's give it up for Sally. So my name is Dilla. I'm from India. Everywhere I go, people expect me to talk with that Indian accent. I don't want to disappoint you. I know you've heard this voice before. Hello. Thank you for calling Yahoo IP support. I am pleased to help you. My name is Brad Pitt. I understand you're having a problem with your computer. Very simple, all you do is unplug the computer and say Yahoo! <laughs> I know you've heard this voice before, I know I have. Thank you for calling Bank of America. <laughs> I'm very sorry to say that your credit, credit limit has been exceeded. My name is George Clooney. <laughs> My father never understood the difference of the meaning of the word pissed off. For 40 years, I tried to explain to him the meaning of pissed off. He says, I don't understand this meaning of the word pissed off. It is pissed on. <laughs> if I'm going to be mad, I want to hit the target. <laughs> Why do I want to be pissed off? Have a go. There are three words that Indians love to use. Basically, totally, and confused. <laughs> but they don't say confused, they say confused. <laughs> I give you an example. You ask an Indian for directions. He says, well, basically, you go down the street and you make a left turn. You make a left, you totally make a left turn without a sure, but you basically make a left turn. You totally make a left turn, and then I get, well, I'm totally confused. <laughs> and of course, when you go visit your Indian doctor, go talk to your Indian doctor. Well, basically, you have a problem with your heart, and you are not totally sure, but we're basically going to do some tests. <laughs> Totally sure, but then of course we we're going to run some additional tests and basically we're going to try to find out and then we're both totally confused. <laughs> so I went to go pick up my uncle from the airport. And again, Indians don't understand basic gestures. I go to pick him up and said, hello. He goes, hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Excuse me, can you ask this uh, Negro fellow to help me with my luggage? <laughs> I said, Ixne on Egrone. <laughs> we don't do this. This is a bad thing. So I have a very interesting background, actually. You know, I'm ethnically from India, but I was born in Nigeria. So get this, under federal law, this makes me an African American. <laughs> So, I'm a black man. <laughs> so to all my African Americans out there, my brothers, <laughs> we are together. <laughs> so I decided to exploit this. I said, uh, you know, if I'm a black guy, I might as well go apply for a job as a black guy. So I applied for a job as a black guy. And the first job I applied for was for a pizza place in New York. Went for the interview, and the New Yorker looked at me and says, What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? You ain't black? You ain't black? What's with the towel on your head? What's the matter? Nice tan? I think he's Puerto Rican. <laughs> then I applied for a truck driver in New Jersey. I was interviewed by Miss Edith Stein. She said to me, she says, Oh my god, oh my god, he's not black. You're not black, honey, I'm telling you, you're not black. Oh, you're Indian, hey, Louisa, he's Indian. Oh my god, you're Indian. What tribe are you? Do you own a casino? <laughs> <laughs> then I interviewed for a job, a professional job at the university. I was interviewed by Miss Shaniqua Watson. And you know, black people are really interesting. When you come in, you know exactly what they're thinking when they look at you. She looked at me when I walked into the interview, she went, <laughs> Looked at my resume, she said, Experience. Mm -hmm. 
Education, mm-hmm. Qualifications, mm-hmm. Black, mm-hmm. I don't think so, baby. So, I'm ethnically Indian, legally black, and I sound like a white guy. When it comes to applying for a job, I'm a white guy. When it comes to fixing a computer problem, I'm an Indian. When it comes to picking up women, hey, baby, it's coming down. This I screwed up the relationship with my girlfriend because she told me, she said, I want you to be honest. All you can lie. I said, okay, I'm going to be honest. So we went shopping for a dress. She put on the dress. You men have all been through this. You know what's coming. She put the dress on. She said, does this make me look fat? Be honest. And I said, no. You look fat before you put that on. <laughs> the last thing that I remember was the chair of wine. <laughs> and we went out for dinner. This very beautiful lady walks by and she saw me and I noticed her. See, we met behind his radar. She looked at me and she said, You like her, don't you? Be honest. I said, Well, just her legs. Oh. <laughs> Last thing I remember was a chair flying, a shoe flying towards my head. Then I made the ultimate mistake. You want to screw up a relationship? Here's the ultimate mistake. I took her to my best friend's wedding. You never take your girlfriend to a wedding unless you are serious about this woman. Because you know what women do when they go to a wedding? Have you ever seen a woman's face when she goes to a wedding? You should watch this. She sits there and she goes like this. <sighs> And she looks at you. <laughs> Don't they look happy? Don't you want to be happy? I said, they're not happy, they're sedated. <laughs> Do we have married people in the audience? <laughs> okay. Oh, you poor guys. What is the difference between a married man and a beggar? One gets to keep his money. <laughs> you have to be married to understand that. <laughs> what is the difference between a married man and a man wanted by the FBI? One is wanted. <laughs> serious. So I will, I want you to, we need more honesty in this world. We don't have enough honesty. So I believe that in order to have honesty, we need an honest set of marriage vows. So I wrote my own set of marriage vows. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today for this execution, I mean this uh, <laughs> union of two souls. If there's anyone that objects to this union, fuck you. <laughs> You, for the group, for the bride, do you take this schmuck to be in your control for the rest of your life? Do you take his mother to become your mother? And by the way, she's a bitch. Do you promise to control his money and spend his money as if it was your own? And for the groom, you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> Anything you say can and will be used against you. In a court, with her mother as the judge, and her girlfriends on the jury. You remember that Bill of Rights? It's gone. From this day forward, you own nothing. <laughs> My name is Dylan.